Welcome, everyone. Is everybody ready for tonight? Pastor Billy said some things last night he was excited about tonight, so just be ready for what God has in store. Let's stand. Let's just usher in his presence. Holy Spirit, we welcome you to have your way in this place. Let the king of my heart, let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shepherd. Thank you. 
Well, praise the Lord. You may be seated for a few moments. Got a number of announcements to get out of the way. And then we're going to go back into worship before Pastor Billy gets here. And uh, we're glad you're here. I'm Pastor David Cook. How many are here for the very first time? Very first. Put your hand up. Just wave it. All right. God bless you. Let's give him a big hand. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Praise you, Lord. Well, a couple quick announcements. Hopefully they'll be quick, but we'll get them out of the way here. Uh, first time visitors, we've asked about that. Pastor Billy may ask you questions later, but we'll leave that to him. Uh, and uh, also, I'm going to skip down because I'm not going to make that one. Who's not getting our uh, emails? You're, you're not on our email list, but you'd like to be on our email list. If that's you, if the ushers, Chris, are you guys ready? We're going to pass out a card to you in a moment. Not yet. I'm going to talk about the other thing. Okay, so the emails keep you informed. We can always go to the website. But we try to keep up to date with the emails and let you know where the meetings are, if there's any changes. But we're also starting something else this week uh, for texting. And if you want to be on the uh, texting list, again, it's just a matter if you have uh, unlimited texting, then it won't cost you. But the, the texts are only going to be for like almost emergency. Planes delayed, snowstorm, that type of thing. That are people may be on the road and you're not going to check your email. That, that way we can text you instantly, say, meeting delayed, meeting canceled, et cetera, et cetera. So if you want to be on that texting list and the email list, if you're not on it now, uh, fill in the cards, print really clear. And on the top of the card, because th those cards are mainly for emails, but on the top of the card, just say, add me to text list and put your cell number in there. Okay, so that's in addition to the email. If you want to be on the email list, if you want to be on the texting list, make sure you print that in there that you want, because if, if you don't print it in there, you won't be on that, you won't be added to the list. So we just want to do that as a convenience to help you and for people traveling, especially longer distance, that we're able to reach you in time in case there's any delays. Everyone say amen. amen. All right, I'll just go ahead and pass out. Put your hands up real high, and during the offering, put it in the offering bucket as it comes by tonight, and uh, we will take that information and put it in our system, and you'll get emails on a text list if you want that. And uh, this week, you'll get an email uh, give you more details about the texting. So if you missed it tonight, you forgot, you're not sure, you want to pray about it, do all that. I'm gonna, if you're on the email list, you're going to get an email this week uh, telling how you just click on the link and be added uh, automatically right to the cell phone list or the, the, um, our list for the uh, texting. All right, uh, let me just see here what else I have. I'll send out a, a special, I mentioned that, uh, the cards, again, put it in the offering bucket as it goes by. No children's ministry. We're live streaming. No recording photos. Do not sit in reserve seating. Okay? Uh, we work out, spend time before each meeting about the reserve seating. So I would even ask the volunteers, please do not place anybody in the reserve seating. It either comes through Cheryl or myself. Okay? Because we get calls. We know up to the moment. And we don't want people placed in seats uh, uh, by, you know, you're loving, you're reaching out to them, I get it. But realize that makes our work much harder. And we have to play musical chairs. Everyone say, I understand, Pastor. Okay, 50% maybe got that. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right, so just keep that in mind. So I'm asking all the volunteers, it's the best way I can do it right now. Uh, don't do that. You check with myself or with Cheryl. Okay, also we're live streaming, so no recording photos, no handing out flyers of other meetings. This is our meeting, and we have live streaming, as I said, so we don't want flashes or cameras or any recording going on in these meetings. Uh, ministry time. Turn off your cell phones, by the way, but during the ministry time, Pastor Billy's been led by the Spirit wherever he goes, and he's going to come into the meeting, and as he discerns things, he'll start to speak out things, call out certain sicknesses and diseases, and that's your cue. Again, if he's calling out right elbow, don't come up with the left foot. It's amazing when people get in that line and say, how did you hear that? I mean, uh, all right, so because it's very specific, the Holy Spirit is targeting those individuals for their miracle. So let's not get in the way of the miracle, okay? Let's, get, let's allow God to do what he wants to do in each individual life in this place. And as the meeting goes on, if we pray with people at the end like we did last night, then great. You just listen to my instructions, but basically we line up. And when, the, when Pastor Billy starts calling out names, you line up, you go to the left side, and you go to the right side. We'll have people there to help you. We have a microphone. And that way we can control uh, what, uh, what's happening in the meeting. Everyone say amen. amen. Say oh me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So um, uh, again tonight, as Pastor Billy uh, starts under the anointing and ministering to people, just flow with us. 
It makes it so much easier. And by and large, that happens here, okay? But especially for the new people, this is new. So get used to the new, hallelujah, and allow the Holy Spirit to do what he wants to do in your life as well as everyone else. Turn to your neighbor and say, did you get that? Okay, we're up to 75%. We're getting there, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Steve, go ahead and show the video of our next crusade. The next two months are at Peter and Paul. Welcome to Touching Toronto with Pastor Billy Burke. We're glad you're here to be a part of this evening's Miracle Crusade. If you've never attended one of these meetings, get ready to witness the power of God on display in a mighty way. And if you've come with a need, we believe that the Lord will meet you tonight as you believe for your miracle. Make sure to mark your calendar for the next Touching Toronto meeting. And if you know someone who needs a healing touch, why not invite them to come and receive their miracle breakthrough. Your simple invitation could change their lives forever. So as you can see there, we'll be at the Peter and Paul Banquet Hall. You can go to our website 24-7, directions, all, everything's on the website. If you forgot what I just said tonight, you missed the video, you were sleeping. So anyways, <laughs> you just go to the website 24-7, and the next two months we'll be at the Peter and Paul Banquet Hall. Uh, last and final thing before we go back into worship, uh, those that have you know, it's on your heart. You want to be a part. You've seen what God's been doing here. You might have been here one meeting, ten meetings. doesn't really matter. But God's put it on your heart. I need to be involved with that ministry, what they're doing, the lives that they're touching. You know, we've had over 50,000 people through the doors, through the doors in 13 years, minus the three for COVID. So God is blessing, and people are being touched and healed, and we're going to continue with that. So if that's on your heart, you want to be part of the ushering team, the volunteers, anywhere, uh, let us know. There's a volunteer application form at the desk. Please take that and fill that out and get back to us as soon as you can with that. And uh, we, we we're expecting growth, and we want you to be a part of it. Amen? So let's stand up. Let's worship the King of glory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And Pastor Billy's going to do something a little different tonight at the beginning. But we'll see what happens when he gets out here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you. 
softly Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working Come on, you never stop working Even when I don't see it, you're working tonight you are here he's working in this place and I worship you I worship you and you are the way maker miracle work his promise keep light in the darkness my God that is who you are darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, Jesus, you are our way maker, way maker. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Aren't you glad when we can't see we can't feel it. His word is still true. He is still moving. He is still working. He is causing those things to be not as though they were. He said, 
we're to open our mouths and declare it. It's up to me to declare what God says. And I just declare over this place tonight, freedom, life, healing, Holy Spirit, that you will have your way. Bless you. Bless you.
impossible when you put your trust in God. Come on, nothing is impossible. Come on, everything, yeah. a little louder. Come on. Thing is with God. Come on, give him a mighty shout. I mean, come on. Oh, my God. I mean, when the devil finally figures out that you're not just going to do what you feel like. You're not going to go by your fe- feelings. Excuse me, because a lot of times you want, you're not real energetic and you need a, someone up here to say, come on a little louder. You got more in the tank than that. You know, and, and just let the devil know that you're serious about the good things of God. That you're on the brink of a miracle. Come on, you're on the brink of a miraculous event. I I don't know how many of you have ever had miracle money. I don't know. I think you've had regular money. Worked hard for it. Miracle money isn't the money you work for. It's the money that works for you. It's money that's coming your way that is beyond what you ever thought could happen at your age. Well, my producing years are behind me. No, that's, that's crazy to think like that. Why would he leave you here alive if all of your best years were behind you? That don't make any sense. Glory to glory to glory. Oh, I don't know who's here with me. I don't know. I mean, the, the reason God does, said that in, in Corinthians is why. It's because he just doesn't want you to think that everything back there is the best. It was great years for all of us. And sometimes you go back there. You're allowed to visit back there, but you can't live back there. Go back there and visit, you know, your child. Go visit times, but you can't live there. And this hurts because some of those years were seemingly the best. Well, then you're telling God, well, you don't have nothing new in your bag. And so you've got to just wait to die and wait to get raptured and wait for heaven and, you know, wait until you get your new body. Oh, my God. Wait till you get your new body. Get a hold of that one right there. Come on, say glory to glory to glory. That's how God works. Everybody here has a greater glory in front of you. You say, but I, I'm, not as, I'm not as handsome. I'm not as pretty as I used to be. No, you're not, but he can trust you more. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's so true. It hurts it's so true. You see, yeah, but I'm not, I'm a little slower, I'm a little, my, I'm not as quick and all that stuff. But see, to God, it's about trust. It's not about how you look and all your skill set. It's about trust. This whole book is about trust. And trust you earn. Love you give. Trust you earn. I can love you without trusting you. I mean, I love you, but I'm not going to trust my children with you. I may not even trust my poodle with you. Come on, say amen. But, but I, if, if time, over time, see, over time, trust is built, then yeah, then I trust money with you. I trust some of, more of my life with you. And when God trusts you, then he shares more of his life that he has for you. Jesus told the disciples, I have a food that I eat of that you don't even know about. They said, Master, you should be hungry by now. He said, I've already eaten. Where do you get the food? I have food you don't even know about. 
he said to the disciples one time, I have much to tell you, but you're not, you can't handle it right now. Another verse says, I haven't seen nor as ear heard the things that God has for those whom he loves. Come on, say, God's got some secrets. Oh, come on, act like you're excited. Say, God's got some, that's going to blow me away, that he has reserved for this time and season. I'm on the brink of a miraculous event. It's about my health. It's about my mind. It's about my relationships. It's about my assignment. It's all about that. And it's coming my way. Come on, give God a big shout tonight. Come on, hurry with, come on. Put your hands up all over the place. We're going to do things a little different tonight. I'll explain to you in just a moment. But just put your hands up and make sure tonight, as last night, as each time that we meet, you don't need Billy Burke to touch you. You don't. I mean, I'm happy to touch you. I'm happy to believe for you. I mean, last night I noticed all these people saying, when you prayed for me, when you touched me, when you... That's wonderful. But what we want to see happen in Toronto... And it's, we have it on some level, but not where it needs to be. Just being in the meeting. I was sitting in my chair when I was giving my offering. I went to go to the bathroom, and I ended up coming back with, a, you know, a healing. I was sitting here, and I was just not doing anything, and my pain left. I believe we're going to begin to see that more and more and more and more and more. You know, we're telling God, send revival. And he's saying, I don't want to send revival. I want to come myself. I want to come myself. Too many people getting too much credit. And none of us deserve it. None of us deserve a lot of the credit that we get. If you have any sense at all of where you came from. How many know where you came from? Let me see. How about this side over here? How many know where you came from? Don't groan. Just say, I know. Come on. Yeah, yeah. How can we take any credit at all for this? People say to me, oh, but Bill, you must have paid a great price to do this. Oh, but there's someone that paid a much greater price. Much greater price. Sh shun away from that. Know what they mean. They're sincere people. It makes you your flesh feel good. But, oh, if you have any weight at all of the spirit in you, you're going to know. There's only one that was completely obedient. One that paid that supreme price. One that never sinned. Only one that was tempted just like we are. And yet said, no, it is written. No, it is written. And no, it is written. What do we say? Yes, I'll do it. And then we say, Lord, I'm sorry I did it. Come on, say amen. That's okay. That's what the cross provides. But the one that we come here to sing to, I don't sing a song because I like it. When we sing, all my life you've been faithful, and all my life you've been good, so good. When I sing that, I see a person. I don't sing a song because I like it. Go deeper. And then you quit the church because they quit singing my song. It's, that's just so shallow. Sing to a person. When you pray, pray to a person. If it helps you to envision him, then envision him. This book right here, this is called the, the written word of God. When you read this, you see it. When you see him, when he talks about he came walking on the water, I don't know about you, but I see it. When he's touching the leper, I read it, I read it but I see it. Train your, your system to read it, and when you, when you read it, you hear him. This is a miracle book. That's why all of hell breaks loose to keep you out of it. If you can't get in it, then just the, the word that's in your heart, just think on that part of it. Everybody here knows for God so loved the world that he... Everybody knows that my God shall... Everybody knows uh, greater is... Everybody knows no weapon. See, you know enough. 
I don't feel sorry for anybody here. But that part that you know that's already in there, if you don't want to open up the physical or your tablet or whatever, just throughout the day, just let him bring something up and think about it. It'll go all through your body. It's what will heal you. The Bible says it will bring health to all of your flesh. How many, how many realize as you're getting older, there's things popping up you never knew existed? Come on. Because your grandfather used to have that. Right? And you're thinking, how come I had that? Because you're now the grandfather. You know, you, you can't just zip through life. Jesus got pretty beat up. He had marks all over him, scratches of, of evil, and we're going to get the same thing, every one of us. We can't get bitter about it. We got to go to the cross. We got to go to the Word. We got to begin to do what we're asked to do to get the same results. Come on, put your hands high as you can lift them. Come on. Come on, say, I believe in Mount Calvary. I believe everything about Calvary. I believe when Jesus was eating the supper, he said, when you do this, not if you do this, when you do this, remember me. Remember me. In other words, don't forget me. Don't forget what I did for you. Don't forget for the price that was paid for every disease, every sickness, every sin, every bondage. Don't forget that I paid the debt for you. Oh, my. Come on, say out loud, I believe the Lord. What he did on Calvary was for now and evermore. There's nothing I've ever did, said, or done. Come on. That is not forgivable. That cannot be healed and cannot be restored. My God and the shed blood can wipe away anything. Come on, give him a mighty, mighty shout. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Oh! I'm going to count to three. I don't know if this crowd can make an unreligious noise. I don't know if you can. No, that's, well, that's what's that. Ah! I want you to let go of something in you that, I mean, you saved for football games or the Toronto Blue Jays. Something you saved for the, 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 the mm, well, hockey, hockey matches. That'll do it right there. Something to let go of. A, I believe if we would clear our bodies, there'd be less disease. I believe praise and, and leaving go of, of holy sounds releases your body. It gives it a flush. It gives it something that, whew, just a shaking to turn loose cancer cells. How about plaque in your arteries? Oh, I don't know who I'm talking to here. There must be a bunch over here that needs it because I'm right here. I'm not way over there. I'm right here. So somebody right in here needs what I'm saying. Yeah. What was that? Where'd you get that noise at? Come here, bring her out here. She's disturbing the peace now. I don't, where are you from? Where are you from? Richmond Hill. Richmond Hill. Do you have a church there? Yeah. What, what's your pastor's name? Will. Will? Pastor Will? He knows who you are? Does he know you're here tonight? I don't think so. <laughs> We're going to send you back to Pastor Will. Bigger, better, and brighter. <laughs> you got to do it, Jesus. Mm. <laughs> See, she, she has, she's expressive. Not everybody don't have to be like this. I hope everybody isn't like this. But you got to be you. You got to be you. That's all. Just be you. It's precious. He's healed you, right? He's healed you, saved you, healed you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I need him. I need him. I 
brief moment. Oh, <laughs> you're talking way too much, way too much. When you talk too much, you're going down. Come on, say amen. You're going down when you talk too much. You know, because everybody has a story, and often we don't have a time here to hear everybody's story, but you have one, and it needs to be heard. God wants to hear it. If you can't tell it here, then find a Bible study or a group of some people over coffee. But find someone that just doesn't talk about themselves the whole time. I'm going to say that again. Find somebody who doesn't just talk about themselves. You know, you go to have lunch with somebody and you want to have equal sharing time. And you leave there and you had a chicken sandwich and, and coffee and that's all you got. Because what God wanted to give you, that lady couldn't keep quiet. It was all about her. And once somebody sees that they can abuse you, they'll keep abusing you. And you're going to end up not liking Christians. You're going to want to say, stay away from that lady in church. Find someone to let you share. It's important. There's healing in that. Confessing to each other, sharing with each other. Finding someone you can trust about what's going on in your life. It's precious. Come on, put your hands up and say, I believe. In confession, it's good for the soul. And I believe that Jesus is my healer. I believe tonight God has a touch for me that I've never received before. It's time for me to rise up and be the person I'm supposed to be. I'm going to shake off these grave clothes. I'm walking out of here a new person. Forgiven. Released, curses broken, and a new path in front of me. Get out of my way. Come on, give God a shout. Wow. Wow. Yes. 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 Woo. Now, tonight, what we're going to do a little different tonight, I have, when, I, when I'm in Tampa, Florida, I have a group. It's called the Mentorship Group, where I mentor people, you know, from our studio in Florida, and we send it out uh, either on MP3 or MP4, whatever they want. And it's just a 10, 15-minute short little teaching that can help them just identify with their Christian walk, and we send it out. Well... What I've been doing recently, when I'm in Tulsa or some of the other cities that we go to, I've asked the group if I could do that class right in front of them, like tonight. What I'd like to do is use you tonight. Well, that's a terrible thing to say. Is to really let me, I'm just going to talk a little bit about a subject matter, boom, boom, and then we're going to move on with this. Is it okay if I do that with you tonight? Now, the only deal is you have to act excited. <laughs> yeah. we'll, re we'll remove all the boring people from the footage, I'll tell you. So if you're boring, we're you're going to find out, oh, I thought I was there. No, we removed you. So if, I'm going to just take a three-second course on how to smell. One, two, three. There you go. Put your hands up high, real hands. Say, Holy Ghost, I belong to you tonight. Every pain in my body. Every disease that's on its way to my house will never make it to my door. It's not welcome here. The plans of the enemy will be broken. The devil will be shut down. I will live out my days. As my days, so shall my strength be. The Holy Ghost is my best friend. He's my partner. He's my helper. He will help me. He alone will help me through anything and over anything. And by the grace of God, I will overcome. Come on, give him a big, big shout. Can you do that? Can you hold this next? You may be seated. So we're going to go like this. Where's the camera we're using for this? this which camera are we using? One in the back? We're using the one back there. You're going to zoom in on that, I presume. We're going to turn our Bibles today 
And I'm coming to you from Toronto, Ontario. Let's give the people that on the television audience a big God bless you from Toronto. And we're talking in a mentorship class today because I, I want to talk to you, both of you out there that are struggling in, in receiving some of the good things that God has for you. The devil does a great job of reminding us of all of the mistakes we've made. He's very good at reminding you of all of the language you shouldn't have said and all of the stuff you never should have stolen. He reminds you of the people you never should have slept with. I'm going to come over here and say that same thing over here. I don't know if, my, if the microphone's working over here, but he reminds you of all the dastardly deeds. And then he says, you're trying to get healed of deafness or cancer, or arthritis, irritable bowel disease, Crohn's disease. You're trying to get healed. And, I mean, just last month you were, you were down at the Joe's bar dancing on the table. Whatever, whatever. He's so good at that. He's so good at reminding you what a, that you were not a good mother, that you were not a good father, that you were an absentee parent. He knows, where to, he knows where to stick and hurt, and then it takes away your motivation. You know, because, because really, the devil don't always show up and tell a lie the Bible don't say in Revelation he's the false accuser of the brethren. It says he's the accuser. Well, why is he not the false? Because if he showed up at heaven and told all lies, there'd be no audience. Jesus said to Peter, he said, the devil's trying to sift you like wheat, but I'm praying for you. Peter's thinking, well, if, you're, if he's sift, trying to sift me, why don't you just take care of it? Because he didn't want to just take care of He wanted Peter to deal with the issues. See, God wants you to be able to hear Holy Spirit on your own, deal with the issues, and learn how to take care of that. Learn how to receive forgiveness. Learn how to receive cleansing. Because if you don't learn how to do that, then you're going to be carrying the weight of yesterday all through your life. And maybe you'll be able to be forgiven from something you did, but you'll never see yourself worthy to be used. That's the reason why a lot of people don't feel worthy to be used by God. Yet some of the biggest names that have ever been used made some of the biggest mistakes that could be made. Well, how did they do that? They learned how to get forgiveness. They learned how to realize it wasn't all about them. It's about him. See, I don't need to preach here all night and telling you all the things that you did wrong because we all know if we think long and hard enough about it, there's not enough space in this room. At least for me, there's not. I think there's a few of you here I can look at. You probably could join me with things you did wrong. I just think we got a bunch of people that have done a lot of bad stuff, but we don't, we're not here to talk about that because it's been forgiven. But it don't mean that you've forgiven yourself. Just because the cross came and Jesus did what he did doesn't mean that you have accepted it to the extent that every time the devil reminds you of it, how do you handle that? How do you, heal that? How do you handle that return to sender mail that keeps coming back to you? How do you handle that nagging sound in your car that keeps talking or that singing refrigerator? How do you handle ongoing serial issues that's accusing you? And some of the stuff you're thinking, I wasn't that bad. I did do this, but I didn't do that. And, and you start comparing yourself with people of different levels of evil. Well, I never did that. I did do this, but I never did that. And, and, and it don't take long to figure out the devil just wants to beat you up no matter what degree of anything you did. He'll remind you about a, a toy you stole from one of the neighbor boys when you were 10 if he has to. Nothing's, nothing, nothing's off the plate. And what happens is if we don't learn how to handle that, 
we can come in here and sing all night long and go to church for all of these years and never, ever feel worthy to receive the healing. Never feel worthy to receive prosperity. What I deal with the most in all the crusades that I do, people coming up to get a miracle and they don't feel like they're worth getting that miracle. They know what they did. One of the biggest questions people ask me is, how come I can pray for other people and they get healed? But when I pray for myself, nothing happens. That's easy. See, you don't know all the stuff other people do. So what do you tell other people? He's the Savior. He'll forgive you. He'll cleanse your mind. He'll scrape out your bathtub and clean your garage out. He'll trim your poodle and cut your grass. He's the God of all sufficient. When you, t- you just oversell Jesus. He's saying, thank you for volunteering me, but I don't do that stuff. Come on. My point is, is that you have no trouble in telling other people how big God is for them. You turn around. And you can't get released from some of the smallest stuff. I shouldn't have said that. Why'd I do that? I, I, I know that she forgave me, but I can't forgive myself because I know how much it hurt her or how much it hurt the church. And you carry that through life. Song after song, service after service, and it somehow it escapes the bloodline. How does that happen? I'm going to read you a verse right here. Okay, and this is just, um, it's just so powerful because it talks about verse number 30 in chapter 4 of Ephesians. This is for our mentorship class here today. It says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Hmm. Catherine Kuhlman used to say, she would say it publicly, and she said it to me privately, and here's what she would say. And I thought, boy, when I grow up, I'm going to say the same thing, (laughs) not ever realizing almost the impossibility of it. I don't want to do anything, she would say, ever that grieves the Holy Spirit. I don't want to ever grieve the Holy Spirit. And the way she did it and the way she said that, I just thought, oh, that's me. That is me. I don't want to ever, not knowing how much I would grieve him all through the years. I didn't want to. And she certainly made it a point to tell her audiences, I don't want to do anything. And so when you think of that, you think, now pay attention to this because you can really learn. And the mentorship, listen, you can learn from this. Because if you're going to serve the Lord, if you're going to be a representative of the gospel, then you're going to have to spend more time being free of even the bad things you did. Who wants to follow you if you're in guilt half half your life? Who wants to buy that product? Or Or you can't give a reason why you haven't manifested a healing yet, and yet in here it's bothering you because you, you know, you were part of a lot of sexual relationships. You know, and yet you've been forgiven, but you just can't get past it. See, some things you get over, but you can't get past. Oh, that's so good. Come on, say some things you get over, but you can't get past. And it just is right there waiting for you to just dare you to try and be prosperous, to dare you to try and be anointed, to dare you to try and really live guilt-free. Is it even possible to live guilt-free? I mean, is, 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 are, is everybody not telling the truth? Is everybody just kind of pretending here that when they go to church, they feel better? But out there, when they get out there away from the presence here, they battle some of the, some of the most horrible, hellish battles. It's not the pain in my arm that bothers me. It's the voice behind that pain that says you have bone cancer. See, it's the the voice behind, you know, after you leave a good meeting and you say, boy, I'm glad I'm saved. And the voice comes in and says, well, who says you are? So there's no real confidence you have because you keep repeating some of the same things as we all do. 
How many times do you have to say you're sorry for the same thing before you get set free? Well, wouldn't we like to all know that? Look at your neighbor and say, you get healed on credit more than you know. Come on, tell your neighbor. How many know what getting credit is? Let me see. That means you don't have the money at the time, but you got that plastic MasterCard. Come on, say amen. And that's the same way you get a miracle. So I, I struggle with this because, I mean, I'm used by God and God doing miracles and healings all these years, and yet in my own life, I've, I've made many mistakes, more than I care to admit, with as much knowledge as I've had. And it humbles you to know, like, then you've got to go out in front of people and, and you know, da-da-da-da. But the longer that I was with Oral Roberts or Catherine Coleman and some of these amazing figures that, that you all know, and I've learned to know them and love them in the time that they were here, I saw the weaknesses. I saw mistakes. Yet I saw the glory pour through them. And I'm thinking, no, some, something I don't know here. There's something I don't know here because something's bottlenecking the goodness of God in my life. How many know what I'm talking about? It just bottlenecks your confidence. And you don't, you don't talk the same way because your son knows you. Your daughter-in-law knows you, and then your daughter-in-law knows that you just don't give a dime to the church or anybody else. Come on, say amen. And, and then you're talking about all this and all that, and you don't, you don't forgive. And the people around you know this about you. And then they wonder how you come home from church. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and then you wonder why they don't want to go to church with you. Well, they're saying, I don't want to live a lie. And so they go down a road of, of total deception, and you're over here. Now, you're doing the right thing. You're staying in faith. At the same time, though, where you're losing is silently. You're saying, well, I don't go to church because I'm good. I go to church because I got to get good. And, and, you, give every, and you, you fight it, but you're losing because you're not happy. You still feel like you're disappointing God. I dealt with this. And I knew that if I was going to grow and the ministry was going to grow and become more global as it is. Come on, give God a big shout tonight. Come on. Then, then I had to deal with this verse. Some of these verses will trip you up. Because it says here, don't grieve the Holy Spirit because you're sealed until the day of redemption. That means that as long as you are married to the man or woman that you're married to. How many is married to somebody right now? Okay, this only counts. How many, how many is planning on keeping that person that you're married to? For all of you who aren't planning on getting rid of somebody, I want you to listen to me, all right? Listen to me. If you're going to live long and enjoy that marriage, you have to learn what turns them on and what. you got to learn those areas of what. I'm going to stay out of that area. I'm going to learn what makes them happy and do my best to do that. And, 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 and what makes them really and try and stay, you learn that in a relationship so you don't grieve that person. So then I, I, I began to put some dots together and I came up with what grieves the Holy Spirit the most? Oh my word, I'd had no clue what I was going to run into with that. I thought, well, was it lying when I lie? The Holy Spirit said to me, yeah, I don't like that when you do that, but I expected that when I came inside of you. See, God isn't shocked by anything wrong that we do. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, you're very difficult to work with. Come on, tell your neighbor. Come on, tell, tell your neighbor that. You, hey, you think when God came inside of you and you lied and lusted and lied and lusted a little more that God was, oh, my God, who did I save? <laughs> He's not shocked by any wrong thing you do. I mean, you were so wrong you couldn't see right. You couldn't change your spots. When he came into you, he looked at a broken down house that needed total restoration with no Home Depot in sight. 
I said, well, Lord, if, if my lust hasn't done that and my lying and my this here, and I just named all these sins that you still deal with, I said, if that doesn't grieve you, then what would ever grieve you? I don't want to grieve you. I don't know what Catherine was talking about. You don't want to grieve. I don't know. I, 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 I don't want to keep going down this road having to be remembered of all the things I did wrong and letting the devil blackmail me for the rest of my life. And here's what he said to me. It set me so free. And I'm so free about this today, and I want you to get free about this. You may have to think on it a little bit. You may have to go back to your pastor or your priest. And when you tell them this, they may fall, fall under the spirit right there. Because <laughs> it's a freedom like no other freedom. Calvary was meant. I mean, the, see, when, when we continue to carry the guilt of something, we just reveal to ourselves we don't understand the day that the cross rocked the earth and the sun went and the, and the moon and the earthquake and dead people came out of their graves. And we don't understand the significance of Calvary. And here's what he said. Here's what the Holy Spirit said to me. He said, Billy, I'm not shocked by anything you've ever said or anything you've ever done. I'm not grieved about it as much as you are. What I'm grieved is, is you don't come to me immediately and get the price that I paid to cover it. Oh, somebody give God a shout. Come on. Come on, somebody. I, 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 couldn't believe, I couldn't believe what I was hearing. He said, doesn't my word say that the righteous, the name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous crawl? No, no. The righteous walk? No, no. The righteous hurt. The righteous run. I don't want you to be in guilt for one nanosecond. And you're only helping the devil by not coming to me immediately. And then I thought to myself, yeah, why don't I go immediately? Because you're so embarrassed that you did something, said something, thought something. And you think by waiting, right, by waiting, then it becomes more presentable to the master. Well, Lord, I've thought this through and I really admit that I'm really. No, you know right the second you said it. You don't got a dummy in here. You got the Holy One of Israel. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. And you know the moment that you said it, the moment that you slept with him, the moment you said yes to her more than him, you know all that. Now, you may not know that if he's not in you. If you're not born again yet, then you, you don't have that illumination. You have conscience, but conscience is not a perfect guide. The unsaved have a conscience, but they don't have the Holy Spirit. Everybody out there don't carry Holy Spirit. Until you get born again, he's not in you. He's out here working, trying to get in you. Come on, once he gets in you, then he turns on the, the searchlight of your soul. He doesn't want nothing to remain hidden. He don't want any weight to hold you back. God wants you to run fast and fly high. Come on, somebody give him a shout. But you're going to have to believe more in the simple, basic, ma before you get into tongues and, and gifts and, and second coming and rapture, before you get into all that, you've got to settle the basic. Because that's the main thing we deal with is that we're still, well, we're still imperfect. Our minds aren't completely renewed yet. You know, we don't, we don't believe everything that we know. Everybody in this room knows more than you really believe. Like you all know that you're supposed to tithe and you get back money, but you don't believe it because you don't do it. You know that if you give, you're just going to give it back, pressed down, shaken together, running over, 30, 60, 90. You know that, but the fact that you don't do it means you must not believe it. So we know more. Come on, say, I know more than what I believe. You know when the devil's working through some of your children or some of your, through your family members, and, and you know you should rebuke it more or say a prayer there or put oil on them when they're sleeping or whatever. But you must not believe it because you don't do it. God can only judge us by what we do or don't do. It shows what extent we believe something. 
So if you believe you're forgiven the moment that you do something. Now, it seems strange to think something, say something, and then you may not be in the company of people at that moment to say anything, but by the time you walk away from them to your car, if you're being completely controlled by Holy Ghost, he don't want you to read. He don't want you. If you, the more you leave something in, the Bible says, after every sunset. Come on, say after every sunset. The longer something stays in you after every 24-hour time period, there's a chance of a spirit coming and attaching itself to you. Now you don't have anger. You have a spirit of anger. Now you don't have lust. You have a spirit of lust. Now you don't have a sickness. You have a spirit of infirmity. Now you're always getting sick. So the important thing is not to leave something in there over, overnight. Deal with, learn to deal with it. Now this, may, this, is, this is, takes habit-forming stuff. You're not used to, you're going to use, oh, I'll, forget, I'll get it right when I go to church Sunday. Heaven could be calling you before that. A lot of people went to work in the World Trade Centers. They didn't know that two planes were going to crash into the buildings. Right now, there's children somewhere stuck in a warehouse, tra trapped in the trunk of a car that have been abducted. And they can't find out where their mother and their father is. They didn't know that was going to happen. And if parents aren't, aren't doing what I'm asking you to do, then they bear the guilt of that. If I wouldn't have done this, then that wouldn't have happened to them. The devil don't fight fair. Come on, say, he don't fight fair. He invented the sucker punch. He does not fight fair. And God's trying to rescue you and rescue me out of everyday life. You know, until we're, until we're out of here and become who, you know, we, the glorified form, we're going to think some things we shouldn't think. And you're going to know it's going to enter that, that domain of your mind, that conscious state. And you're going to hear and you're going to know that's not right. You say, yeah, but if I do what you... If, if I do what you're saying, Billy Burke, if I do that, I mean, gosh, I, yeah, you won't have time to get in trouble. <laughs> yeah, you'll be full time. Yeah, but if I do it that much, you'll be committed. But if I do it as much as you say, yeah, you'll be guilt free. And if you're guilt free, that means your confidence and your level of boldness to lay hold of what God has for you is unmatchable. Come on, come on, come on. You don't lie through your teeth, you lie through your eyes. I pray for more people that I say, God's going to give you a miracle tonight. And I'm looking right at them and their eyes are telling me, you don't know what I did. Yeah. Their eyes tell me that. I'm thinking, ma'am, listen to me. You know, you know I'm, I'm, I've been smoking cigarettes for 30 years, and I, that's why I got this lung cancer. And, and so no matter what you say, I did what I did, and now I'm paying the, the, the main guy. I'm paying him because this is what I did. And once you get there, oh, my. And then she goes to a church. And she goes to an altar, or she goes to a priest, and he does what he does. And, and she's still living in the guilt of smoking. I said, have you ever said you're sorry to the Lord? Well, you know, it's, I mean, I keep doing it. Well, didn't, you, didn't anybody ever tell you that he d never runs out of grace? It's actually called the throne of grace, that there's an unlimited supply of that stuff. It's a river that never runs dry. But see, we're so used to expiration dates and penalty if you don't pay your insurance on time and oh if you miss a car payment then they add this on to it and oh God bless you if you're late for your credit we're used to penalties and fines and late fees come on somebody and God don't think like that 
God says, you, you don't understand. I came out of heaven. I was in a perfect place. I never heard a cuss word, a swear word. I never seen a bad movie. I left perfection to come here and climb into a dirt body. That's right, a dirt body. I climbed into this imperfect body. And then I had to put up with all this imperfect. I did all of this so you could be forgiven instantly. Come on, somebody. You know, we have a daughter, Bokeh, she lives in Nashville. She's involved in some of the stuff there. And, and she's, you know, now, right now she's in Malibu. She's out there doing some stuff with the film industry. And we're excited for what she's doing. But she's a young person, 28 years old. And, and well, it might be a year or so ago, she got in heads over heels in finances. She made some pretty stupid decisions. I may make a stupid money decision. Oh, we got liars here tonight, I'll tell you what. <laughs> so my wife tells me, she told me what was going on. I said, well, why, why didn't she call? I mean, it, that money that she needs, I, I have that. It's not that much that I can't help her. Why didn't she call me? She says, well, she, you know, she, she just feels bad. She don't want to take from you. She's been taken from you her whole life, and she just don't want to. And so she said, don't tell Dad, and I'll find the way. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. Why am I here? Doesn't she understand why I'm here? That as long as I can do enough, it's something out there that I can't do, then, then we call friends. Come on, say, we call some friends into this. But I couldn't do it. I mean, I could do this. And I was like, it really hurt me. It grieved me that there she is putting herself in harm's way to who knows what. And she needed X number of dollars, and she wasn't going to tell me, but she told her mother, and it trickled down through the mom to the dad. <laughs> I said, so how much, how much do you really need? And she told me, she says, I said, we got that. And I said, if we don't have it, we'll sell whatever we have to get it. Don't you, she understand the love? And the Holy Ghost answered me, no, she don't. Most people don't. And a lot of people never had that love. They never had that parental love. They never had that love. So when you get born again, it's hard to fathom that there's somebody here that says, I know how bad you've, what you've done, but if you turn to me, there's no Hail Marys and Our Fathers. There's no you. People tell me, I'm going to build you a church for what you did. I don't need you to build me a church. Number one, I don't want any church. I go all over. I don't need a building. No, no. Oh, but when I get my first million, no, don't do that to me. No, just, just if you can give an offering, fine. If, but no, understand, this is all free. Yeah, but that can't be. No, you were raised wrong. You weren't raised right. Everything that, you know, you have to stay after school and write 3,000 times. I'll never throw erasers at people again. So what do you do when you get older? You throw wrenches. Come on, somebody. <laughs> my, my point in saying this to the mentorship class is this. The, the thing that causes God the most grievance is the price that he paid, and we don't go to it quickly. That's true. Because what you make God feel like is I suffered for nothing. You don't want to make the cross of Christ and all that he went. I mean, there was blood on all four sides. His body was empty of all fluid. See, God's confirming everything I'm saying here tonight. <laughs> so I speak heaven answers. You better be good tonight. <laughs> What if, that's, what if what I'm saying to you is true and somewhere subconsciously this is you and it's blocking a healing of migraines. It's blocking the pressure being released from your glaucoma. It's causing you to go home early. Well, at least I go to heaven but at least your children have no parents. Quit thinking of you so much. You're needed here. 
You are needed here. But if you're going to represent Jesus and the gospel the way you need to is letting your people see that, yeah, dad did wrong and I made some bad decisions, but, man, I took it to him. And when you get that release from heaven and that burden of guilt is off of you, oh, my gosh, it's brand new. Then people look at you and say, man, what, how, do you do, how do you deal with this? You look like you don't make any mistakes. Oh, I make more than you. I just know where to take them. I just know where to take them. One lady came up. She was on a, on a oxygen tank. You know, her name was uh, Joyce. Joyce was come up. She was like 83, 84, and she had an she had oxygen mask on, and she was still smoking while she was on this. I could smell the nicotine. And she came up, and she said, she said, I, I need a miracle. Brother Billy, I need a miracle. <sighs> She said, I tell you, she said, but I, I just haven't done things right. And, and, and I said, I could smell it. I didn't ask her if she smoked. I could smell it. So I wasn't going to condemn her for that. I said, well, you know what? I said, you know, God knows you need help with this. And I think he's going to heal you on credit tonight. She said, I never heard of that. <laughs> I said, oh, he heals a lot of us on credit. Then he comes back later and tries to help straighten it out. But right now he knows you need to get healed. She said, I mean, I can get healed just like this, just like this. But she says, I know you can smell the nicotine. Yeah, it's pretty strong. I can smell it. She says, I still smoke. I said, I thought so. <laughs> well, how can he heal me? Because he's not you. He's not me. That thief that was on the cross with him didn't even have time to prove that he changed. Well, I'm going to see an attitude change. Well, just think about if God said that to you and to me. Nobody would be saved. I said, don't worry about it. I said, just, and I touched her. And when I touched her, the power hit her so strong, the mask came off. She flew, the thing came out of her nose. The tank went that way, and she's laying on the ground. And here's what she said to me. She said, this is the hardest place to breathe. I said, well, then that's why you're down there. Breathe. She said, but I can't breathe. I said, then die. <laughs> She said, I'm not going to die. Then she, got, she had that fight in her. <laughs> and she got healed. Now, wait, but, but she got healed, but before that healing could be released, somebody had to break that guilt of her knowing she contributed. I prayed for people that have had, they've been, they did so many drugs. One guy said, my brain is fried. I said, well, maybe we can now do something different with your brain. He said, well, it's fried. I said, well, we're going to unfry it. How are you going to unfry it? We're going to just bring the name in. If we have to bring the blood in, if we have to bring the anointing in, if we have to bring a promise in, we got a lot of assets here. Come on, somebody say, there is the full force of the kingdom. And sometimes you got to use it. You reach for the name, sometimes it needs more than a name. You need a verse. Sometimes I got to give my testimony. When you get in front of people, you got to be willing to give everything that you have to break the yoke of bondage. Then when she got up, she said, wow, that was amazing. She said, I can breathe. I said, isn't that something? And I said, you, can smell st you still smell like nicotine. She said, I'm not going to smoke. I said, well, ask them to help you. You're going to need help getting off of this. Ask them to help you. See, that honesty is so freeing. Then you're not, a, then you're not ashamed to come back to church or testify to anybody if they, if they see you down in McDonald's, you know, lighten up or something. And they say, I, I thought you got healed the other night. I, I did, and I, I, I went from a pack down to a half a pack. Now, that may not mean a lot to some people because some people just have no mercy. Well, you should be off them all together. Well, I'm glad you're not in charge of all this. He works with you. God works with you. He works with you. He'll bring you along little by little until you're free. You know why? He loves you more than you love yourself. And he wants you free. He wants you to know that the cross works, the blood works, the name works. And if, and if you're struggling in any of these areas of, of, of you're still having issues, and, and it could be this subconscious thing that's blocking you. And then you start getting jealous of everybody else. Look at the car they got. Look at, that, look at that couple. They're really happy. 
And then you begin to think, well, the reason I'm not, and you begin to connect those dots to something that you're thinking or saying. If I'm saying, I'm not into pornography, no, but it's in you. Those pictures that you looked at 20 years ago, they can show up at any time. That's what the devil does best. He brings stuff back that he knows that. And you've got to be able to say, forgiven, 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 forgiven. That too, forgiven, 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 forgiven. You've got to begin to really fight back instead of just saying the same thing and the devil's thinking you're avoiding the issue. Don't avoid the issue. When the homosexuals came to Sodom and Gomorrah, they beat on the door of Lot's house. They were after Lot, and they were, they were after the angels, the some homosexuals, the Sodomites. They were Sodomites. And these angels are inside the house, and they were, they're, these, these Sodomites were beating on the door. And, and Lot said, these guys are bad. They're bad news. They're, they'll do bad things to you, and let me give my daughters to them. And the angel said, no, no, we're not going to do that. No, just open up the door. We don't run from anybody. Open up the door. No, no, you don't understand. Open the door. I'm not running from somebody. I'm going to face it. I'll face my accusers. I'll face that accusing spirit. I want to tell that thing that's accusing me of all that I did in my past. I want to remind them, you didn't keep my brochure updated. I came to Jesus. I got born again. Come on, I got healed at an altar. Come on, I got set free. Sometimes the devil loses the records of your new life. And you got to remind him, say it, I'm born again. I'm saved. I'm healed. God loves me. There's no condemnation. I'm being renewed by the word of God. Sometimes you've got to remind him because the devil does have brain damage. And you've got to really remind him that you are a new creature. And just watch the grace that comes in behind that. What do you mean the grace? Grace follows a decision. Grace follows you saying something, and grace comes in and empowers it to happen. And there's one thing that God likes to do is he likes to be believed. God does not like to be doubted. He doesn't like you to think, well, what you've done is worse than anybody else. We were in that meeting in Sarasota, and Charles Manson's grandson came into our service. I didn't even know him at the time. I didn't know him. He came up, and he, he, he's right there, and he said, hey, I've been watching you on the Internet, and I, I have a curse on my life and on my family. I didn't ask him his name. I just said, hey, well, that's really great. And so how long have you been? He said, I just want to kill myself. I want to kill people. I didn't know who he was. I didn't know. I said, well, that's not going to happen here. I just reached out and touched his head. Boy, the power hit him. He went down, and boy, these, these things just came out of him. Well, later, I'm in the room after the meeting, and I got one of my rushers come back and said, hey, do you know who that guy was? I said, I don't know. I didn't know his name. It's Charles Manson's grandson. I went, oh. <laughs> oh. I said, tell him I want to see him. So he came in the back. I said, is Charles Manson your grandfather? He said he, he was. He said, he was. He said, man, when you touched me, the lights went out. He said, I can't tell you how I feel. So I said, come on up. He came to Tampa. We filmed the testimony, but the Holy Spirit said, don't air it. Wait two years. I called Kenneth Copeland's office. I said, hey, Kenneth. Hey, George, Pastor George. We, he said, just hold on to that footage. Don't show it because we don't know yet. Let's wait and see what God does. So two years passed, and he came into another meeting. There he was with his wife. I thought, well, this is interesting. And he looked different. He sounded different. He came up to the altar, and he toned around to the whole place. He said, my life has been so changed. He said, I want to tell you what we're doing now. And his wife, he said, we are helping people recover from suicide, from this horrible life of 
comes things coming down the family line, these curses. And I want to thank God. And I'm saying, come on, some, throw, throw some thanks this way. You know? And he, but the point of it is, is it was genuine. I said, do you mind if I tell this story? He said, no, tell it. He brought the urn of Charles Manson's ashes and sat them on my desk. My secretaries ran. <laughs> and I didn't, I knew it was an urn, but I didn't know who was in the urn. <laughs> you know, and, and I said, what's this? He said, that's my grandfather. I said, Your, I said that's Charles Manson? He said, yeah, it's in that urn. And I just, and the Holy Ghost said to me, well, now's a good time to see how strong you are. When Jesus touched a leper, was he afraid of getting leprosy? Or was he saying, I'm not getting what you have. You're going to get what I have. Come on. Come on, say, that's how strong you can get. So whenever that thought comes up that condemns you from something, and I'm not going there. Just the muscle on your mind that can say, no, no. I've paid that price. Calvary's paid that price. And continue to move. You're going to need every space in your mind as you move forward to just beat this culture. Just to beat the news channels. Just to beat the health departments of what they're allowing to come into our menus and, and all through our land. They don't legislate. The, the Food and Drug Administration is not on your side. They're after money. They don't care about you. I mean, you got to really read those labels of what's in that stuff. They'll make anything to taste good for you to swallow it. Where's all the cancer coming from? From labels that aren't being read. The point of it is tonight is this. In this grieving the Holy Spirit. Do you know him well enough just to turn to him right after you do something? Right after you have that anger? Right after you throw something at somebody? Right after you told your wife, I don't need you anymore. I don't need you. I don't need you. Why don't you take your clothes and go back to your family? I don't need you. Or right after you find out that, you know, something caught up with you that you did years ago. What do you do with that? Master, I ask you to touch me. Come on, put your hands up. Say, Master, touch me tonight. Forgive me. The blood of Jesus is still flowing from Calvary. I don't want to live with this. Guilt isn't from you, and neither is shame. I don't want to live like this. I'm tired of it robbing my confidence and breaking up covenant after covenant after covenant. I declare you evil and not a part of my redemption. I receive forgiveness and cleansing and the healing stream of God. Let the healing rain fall on me. Come on, somebody give God a big shout. Come on, give him a big, big shout tonight. And I have to say, this, 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 this grandson of, of Charles, listen to me. This guy loves God so much, him and his wife both, and they're actually joined together, moving all across the country, Telling their story, who they are, what they've had to come through, and how much forgiveness has changed their life. You know, so I mean, you, because in the blocking of your miracle, because we all eat wrong. I'm going to go over here. These people are tired of me looking at them. (laughs) We don't eat right. We don't always talk right. We don't always make right decisions. And so we're aware of that. You're not stupid. So when the doctor says there's three spots on, there's three nodules on your throat, what do you think about doing? Well, I need, what happened? We move into fear. Uh, I can't believe that's there. And then you go get a, you know, a second report. It's there. And what, you want to make sure that you are activating, because if you don't, then you're grieving the Holy Spirit who says the bill was paid at the cross. The bill for your guilt, the bill, all you have to do is just say, Lord, I bring it into the light. 
If I walk in the light as he's in the light, oh, my. Oh, my. I was in a meeting, and, and the devil came to me, and he said, you don't love these people like you think you do. I said, pardon me, I happen to love all these people very much. He said, no, you don't love these people like you think you do. I thought, man, but it hurt me. It just, like it was a knife in me. And so the meeting was over, and I was driving back to my hotel room, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, it's true, Billy, you don't love those people like you think you do. I said, pardon? He said, that's my love moving through you. That's my love. In those healing meetings, don't tell the people. I shouldn't be telling you all this, but it's true. Because I was wondering, why do I pray for so many people and I love them, but they bother me? <laughs> Not everybody, but there's people that just, they're just contrary. They don't want to quit what they're doing. They, 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 they obstruct what could happen so quickly. He said, no, that's not your love going through people. That's my love. You're releasing my love. Your love is growing. You're coming along. You're getting better at, at overlooking everything. But right now, until your love is perfected, I'm moving through you to love those. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Come on. So now I deal with it. I deal with, I see the holes in my love. And I don't want to love you if, and I don't want to love you because. That's conditional. I want to just love you. And I'm working at that. There's, thank you, ma'am. I appreciate that. There's one person here that loves me. I love that. That's, <laughs> now I will feel bad the rest of the night. I, it's just going to be. <laughs> no, but it, it's good to know what you need to work on. Because it's easy to get into conditional love or racial love. Everything's cool until you're faced with a situation. They're like, wow, they did me wrong. They charged me too much. They ripped me off. That pastor ripped me off. And we just, I was just telling somebody, we had, did a big meeting, and I mean, half of the money that was coming, supposed to come our way to our ministry, he took it and ran. Yeah, and I just thought, oh, wow. And I thought, well, I wonder what we're going to do with this. And the Holy Ghost just said, yeah, what are we going to do with this? Come on, quickly, forgive quickly. I don't want to forgive quickly. Come on, see, I want to think about it a little bit. Come on. I want to punch him out a couple times. Get him. Come on, a little torture here. He says, no, quickly. Come on, say quickly. Because that stuff gets in you, and pretty soon it's blocking you from what you want. And the devil wins both ways. Yes. Get clean tonight. Or if you can't do that all the way, say, you're going to have to help me with this one, Holy Ghost. You're going to have to help me with it. I'll, I'll forgive by faith. If you don't feel like forgiving, then come on, say, by faith. By faith. I forgive you. Forgive. If you can get healed by faith, you can forgive by faith. That means you don't see it, you don't feel it, but by faith you're healed. And if you can, if you can get healed by faith, then you can forgive by faith. Because if they have to earn your forgiveness, it's not real. I didn't earn my forgiveness. He just forgave me in my worst moments. When I failed him the most, he forgave me. And to this day, I mean, I'm not here talking to you if that doesn't happen. Billy Burke isn't here talking to you. I'm not doing the works of God all over the world if that doesn't happen. Because nobody's that good. Nobody's that good. Put your hands up all over the place tonight. Come on, see, I don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit in any way, shape, or form. I know issues I'm dealing with. And I can't deal with them by myself. But the Calvary did. There was enough blood that was shed, enough flesh that was tortured, and he rose again the third day, and he said, it is finished. He's paid the tab. He paid a debt that I owed. I'm not going to keep paying that debt. I'm going to live on the love of God. I'm going to live on the credit of Calvary. I'm going to do my best to respond quickly to every evil thought 
and every mistake. I'm not going to look to men and good works. I can't buy it. It's not for sale anywhere. But I can go to him. And instantaneously, there's a release from heaven that breaks every chain and every fetter. And I'll not continue in that problem the rest of my life. The curse is broken. Give God a thunder of praise. Come on. Come on, give him a mighty, mighty, mighty shout. So who do we have here tonight? First time tonight in the meeting from anywhere tonight? Anybody? First timers tonight over here? My good friend from Miami. Come here, Mr. Good Looking from Miami. This is Michael Ferrier. I didn't know you were going to be here tonight. Come here. He's the one that brought this here, right here. What's this about? He works for American Airlines. Tell him what you do. How long have you been with American Airlines? 37 years. 37 years, American Airlines. And what do you do there? What's your role there? I was on a business trip today, but... um. A lot of people uh, in Miami need some healing. I told them I'll bring a cloth for you to oh. pray for them heal and you know, receive healing. What you, what's your role there in the, in the uh, flight flight attendant? Flight attendant. Yes. So you what you have a, you go to Paris a lot, or yeah, I'm going to London Wednesday. We get back to Miami tomorrow. London Thirty-seven Wednesday. years with the airlines. Have you yeah. ever had a close call on a flight? Or? Yes, I have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what that feel like? Um, you can sense the spirit of fear comes on, right? In the atmosphere. But by you buying the spirit of fear, and um, we had an emergency where um, we were going to make emergency landing because the landing gear didn't work. Mm. So the captains are preparing for evacuation. You know, we were going to use certain doors, not the wing, because the fuel is there. And the first thing you do, you buy the spirit of fear. We learned. Mm. I did personally, and then uh, we had a briefing, and we showed the passengers how to brace. And at the end, we did all that. Uh, one of the crew members said, uh, is anyone religious? <laughs> I didn't say anything, but one of them pointed at me, so she said, can we pray? So we stood there in first class, and we prayed, and we took a third of the spirit of fear, tragedy, calamity. Give God a big shout. Come on. <laughs> Come on. We pleaded the blood of Jesus over command the the devil take his hands off the landing gear. Wow. And about two minutes later, Captain called me and says, it's working. The landing gear works. Wow. I, w- I was on a flight. I was on a flight, and we went through this turbulence that was really bad, not average. And there was a lady. I was on the end seat. There was a lady here and a lady next to her by the window. And I was just here, and I was praying, even the wind and the seas obey him. Even the wind and the seas obey him. And I just happened to look out the window, you know, and, and I said, oh, my God, Jezebel's on the wing. <laughs> now, I didn't realize they said it out loud. <laughs> See, and the lady next to me said, would you say? I said, well, ma'am, and she said, no, what you say? Did I hear you say Jezebel? I said, yeah, she's on the wing. And well, the lady sitting next to me, she, goes, she looks, she said, I don't see anything. <laughs> She said, what do you see? I said, ma'am, I don't mean to get you all worked up, but I said, just, just sit back. I'm going to get Jezebel off the wing. <laughs> now, watch this. This lady says, who are you? I said, ma'am, just don't talk. Just don't <laughs> talk. You're going to ruin my prayer if you keep talking. <laughs> and I just put my hand, I said, Jezebel, in the ne-, and I just did that. See, we that are of the Spirit. See, the natural mind can't perceive the things of the Spirit. If you're going to grow in this and you want to go all the way before you make an assessment of what all's available to you, I mean, the, the, the riches of Jesus are unsearchable. They can't be discovered. There's no calculator that can tally them. And I said, in the name of Jesus, get off of this wing. Well, then the plane started rocking rock more. She said, well, look like it's not working to me. <laughs> I said, it's working. Jezebel's upset. No, she, she said, I, I don't know. She was swearing at me, tell you the truth. Who the blink? And I said, Je- get that, Jezebel. After a while, boy, the plane just straightened out. And I just sat back in my seat, and she said, hey, is Jezebel gone? I said, well, do you see her? She said, <laughs> she said, I never seen her to begin with. I said, well, I did, and she's not there. So just enjoy the flight. And, boy, she was grumbling the rest of the She just grumbled and mumbled the rest of the way to the thing. 
But when we landed, she said, could I get your name? I said, I'm the Lone Ranger, lady. I'm the Lone <laughs> Ranger. She said, where's Tonto? I said, he couldn't make this trip. <laughs> Smart aleck lady. Let's put your hands up and pray for these cloths from Miami tonight. Come on, say, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. From Toronto to Miami, Toronto Miami, the anointing that's here, let it go there. For this city is the crossroads of the world, and many will come, many will receive, and many of these cloths will be sent all over the world to touch people in calamity, in disease, in broke, in lack, in restriction, in depression. There is a move coming that cannot be shut down. There will be meetings that will never end till the rapture happens. Come on, somebody give God a big shout all over this place. Where do you go? Give that to him. Come on, give him a big shout tonight. Wow. Hey, do we have any testimonies from last night? Anybody here get in touch last night? Yes, quickly here. Anybody else over here? Anybody else? Last night? Oh, hurry, lady. Don't. Come on, hurry. Yes, lady. Anybody else? Give me a half a dozen at least. Half a dozen at least. Do we have any men that got healed? All the ladies are getting healed. What's going on with the men? I don't know. Here's a man that got healed last night. Quickly. Okay, come to me, Reader. What happened to you last night? We need a microphone, Reader. What happened to you last night? I had a pain in my ankle, my left ankle, for about three weeks. Yes. And uh, I could hardly walk oh. up and down stairs. And last night it was the worst it's been. And I sat down most of the night because I couldn't stand. Oh, my. And then um, th when you, all the people lined up, I got in the line. You prayed for me. I went down. When I got up, it was about 78% better. 78%. And today I'd say it's about the same. I've been able to stand tonight. It's still a little bit there, but I'm expecting to get the rest well, of it Let me tonight. tell you this. Not only did you get a healing, but your bone density has changed. Hello. Your bone density. There's, there's, a, there's an issue. You have an osteoporosis issue. There's a bone density, a lack of bone density. Yeah. That has changed. Praise You're not going to have bone issues. Come on. Oh. Come on. Somebody give God a shout. Yes. So I'm here because the enemy tells me this is an insignificant testimony uh, because it's small. Um, I came last night because uh, I have a mass on the side that they are going to be checking to see if it's cancer. There's also... Um, What's small about that? Uh, no, it's not that. And then, and then there's COPD. And then I've had a neck issue since January uh, and this tormenting pain through my head when I sleep yeah. and on, in my shoulder. And last night... I, I couldn't move my head well, looky before. There. Now I can move my head, but it's still painful. It hurts a little bit. Okay. Yeah, and I still have this, but it's How do you a know small. You had that? It I can feel the feel the when I breathe. It's, Does it hurt? It's tight. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So do breathe again for me. Yeah, what? it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. <laughs> You know, do you know what's sad? I could go home tonight and turn on The Price is Right. They'd be more excited than you are tonight <laughs> over a refrigerator or a, a year's worth of Jolly Green Giant peas or something. Man, the lady right in front of you said it is gone. Come on, what's the matter with this crowd? Come on. I mean, she fought even coming up here to tell that story. And then right in front of you. But I know what some of you are thinking. Yeah, but how do you know? How do you know? If a symptom tells you you have something, then the lack of that tells me you've lost something. you got to believe. None of this works without your faith. None of this works without your faith. And your faith will grow the more meetings that you're in. You're just trying to get me here. How'd you figure me out? How did you figure me out? I'm trying to get you strong because there's a storm coming. There's another shoe going to drop. And God don't want the church to be seen as the most fearful group on the planet. Come on, put your hands up and say, I'm going to be full of faith. This time I see them coming. And I will tramp on a serpent.
and a scorpion. And over all the power of the enemy. And nothing by any means is going to hurt me. Come on, say, the Holy Ghost has surrounded me. I have a ring of fire around me. And I believe that I'm here to step on the enemy. Come on, give God a big shout all over this place. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah, but the Holy Ghost on this. The Holy Ghost on this. Come on, we got to get a guy up here, sir. Come up here and help me here with these. What happened this last night? Yeah, what last happened? night you were praying for me. So I was uh, completely deaf with my, with my right ear. You were what now? I, I was completely deaf with my right ear. Totally deaf? Yeah. Uh, and then I could hear like uh, five percent to ten. You were able to yeah, hear? Yeah. You were I just totally deaf though. With the headphone, yeah. To God be the glory. Be the glory. Come on, to God. Be the glory. To God be the glory. For the things. Yes, ma'am. Last night was my first night, and for the last six months, I've been carrying deep resentment and felt deep betrayal uh, from my sister. Wow. And after leaving last night, I felt different, and then this morning, all of that had disappeared. <sighs> you better do better than that. That's... With his blood he has saved, and with his blood he has to who? To God be the glory for the things he has done. That's amazing. How long have you had that resentment? Six months. Six months. That's yeah. pretty good. That's not too bad, but still bad enough. And it's all gone. It's all gone. Yep. Totally gone. Where are you from, man? Toronto. That mm -hmm. power of the Holy Ghost. Oh. Wow. Quickly, ma'am, yes. What happened? So, um, what you just, uh, when you help that woman with the, uh, my favorite thing to watch you do is help people increase their faith. And when you ask, where's the pain? And they yeah. start saying, here, here, and all of a sudden, it's like, gone. oh, it's gone. Yeah. So yesterday... I mean, just a minute. That, that guy that got healed of the ear, where'd he go? Where's he at? Yeah. He's completely deaf in that ear. I know sometimes we're here and we don't process things too quickly, but I mean, I didn't even charge him. I won't even send him a bill. <laughs> I don't know if he's going to give in the offering tonight or not. I hope he does, but... Listen, that's how good God is. That's why we're in these meetings in Toronto all these years. But he expects you at some point to begin to use your own faith. I mean, you can't breastfeed forever. Why not? Because you get teeth. You're of age. You need to use the name and get those scriptures and use them and pray. He loves you. He favors you. So what's going on with you? You have a testimony. What happened to you? Up, I came up and um, my mom wanted me to give you her testimony, but they weren't doing that. It was done. Uh -huh. And I found out that you called out for knees, and I heard you praying for knees. The ligaments and the knees. And I had just come up and told you about when they were healed the first time you prayed, but yeah. lately they'd been really bothering me, and yeah. I didn't even get to the point of saying, but... And then it was all gone, just as I was telling you the testimony. I leaned on my leg, and it was strong. When I was showing it to you, I expected pain. I was like, and for the rest of the night, I could, like, I could lean right on it. It's absolutely fine. I didn't even get to tell you. The 
devil hates when you do that. He hates when your car points in this direction. He hates when you sit here and sing these songs. Every song that you sing that we sing here is prescribed for you to sing this night. It's the medicine for tonight. Because when you sing a song, it just don't, you don't sing it. You absor- it goes down inside, it touches your lungs. You're inhaling praise. It touches your spleen, your, your gallbladder's on this side. It touches all of your colon. It touches every part. If you praise him, and some of the songs we sing you may not know or you may not even like, but if you'll just do it. You know, when that doctor gives you a prescription, you don't always like that, but if you do this three times a day, this is the prescription for your spirit. You get your spirit here and your body lines up. It's just time. I'm so happy for you. I'd like to tell a testimony from my mom who would love to be here. Okay. Just too much. What happened to your mom? Um, so she got prayed for, and um, apparently I wasn't there, but my sister said she'd been having trouble swallowing her pills, and she hadn't been able to. Okay, swallowing her pills. And this morning, mm-hmm. she, the nurse was saying, wow. She's, she's a like nurse? Swallowing. No, no, the nurse who the was nurse giving said. her the pills said that my mom had just swallowed. She said she swallowed them so easily, she, and so swallowing had been a problem. So I just... You're sweet. You're sweet. You're very sweet. You're a very sweet girl. Very sweet girl. Very sweet girl. Get the book out. I've never seen that one in the book. I don't know. Yes, ma'am, quickly. What happened to you last night? Um, You asked, you had told people if they had hearing problems, um, buzzing in the ear. Buzzing in the the ear. Buzzing went. but. Two years ago, I was terrorized and tortured by the government, and um, I had a stroke because of it, and bruising, cutting, and my heart started getting arrhythmias. Since coming to see you, I have no heart condition. It's God. And, And thank you, God, because I do believe the Holy Spirit lives in this man and in each of us. And this has been the best place to come if you want to meet God. Come here. Come on, give her a big God bless you. Come on. Oh, my. Oh, my. You believe this and Jesus said you'll see heavens open and angels dancing on the ladder. God's going to give you an open heaven, lady, an open heaven, an open heaven. Quickly. Yes, ma'am. For a whole last week, I, fe- I felt so weak and no energy, less energy. Horrible. Last week, you prayed for me. Yes. And in the morning, I woke up different. And I went outside and I was marching around this circle where I'm living and praising the Lord. And I'm so happy to do my very first testimony oh. about that. But I have a sad news. You have what? Sad news. Oh. I have unbelieved husband. Unbelieving husband. Unbelieving, yes. Yeah, that's, well, it's okay. He, he's a Jew. Okay. I am a Jew from mom too. You're a Jew too? Yes. Okay. But my husband, yesterday, uh-huh. uh, last night, he told me, you are not going anymore for healing services. Yeah. Okay. He just uh, uh, best thing me, to do. The best thing to do is just stay happy. Yes. Happy cures a lot. Being positive cures a lot. Walking out your victory. Quit trying to coax people. Live in front of them. But I'm praying that my father will help me to do. And it's, and I need more touch, healing touch. <laughs> I love you so much. <laughs> and next week, uh, surgery is planned, uh, planned next week to do on my lung. What for? What's wrong uh, with your lung? For, uh, uh, they say, cancer. Who said that? Doctor. Did you have a second report? Did you get a second report? Second report from you. Always get a second report and on I, everything. I, I believe that there will be no cancer found. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. Come on, give God a shout. Yes, sir. How are we doing tonight, sir? Over this way. 
What's going on here tonight? So I, I missed last night's meeting, but I've been to several others. You missed last night's meeting, but you came to several others. Okay. Uh, in 2021, I had a brain injury. I okay. had a dirt bike accident. What, motorcycle? Yep. Uh -huh. And? So I spent two months in a coma. I was five months in the hospital. The doctor told me I would never walk again. <sighs> All my doctors told me I would never drive again. I came to a meeting at Selwyn Gospel in August. And you better ready to stand you, to your feet. You told me that I would pass my driving assessment the next week, and I did. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, somebody give me praise. Come on. Come on, somebody. You are the God that healeth me. Come on, Duncan. You are the God. Come on, that healeth me. You are the Lord, my healer. You sent. You sent your word and, and healed my disease. You are the Lord. You are the Lord, my healer. Everybody, a little higher. You are the God. You are the God. That You're doing great. You are the Lord, my healer. Come on, everybody. You are the God. You are the God that healed me. You are the Lord, you are the Lord my, my healer. healer. You sent your word. You sent your word. And, and you healed my disease. You are the Lord. You are the Lord, my healer. Young man. Doctor said he'd never walk. Doctor said he'd never drive again. He's doing both. He still has some recovery. He's a miracle in motion. But here's a perfect textbook on how you testify. You don't wait till it's all complete. You thank him for the stuff that he's done. Come on, say I'm 80% there. I'm 50% better. I don't take as many needles as I used to. Yeah, I don't get up and go to the bathroom three times a night. I'm down to one time a night. Thank him for every little bit of progress. I mean, it goes a long, long, long way. Amazing, young man. Where do you go to church? Selwyn Gospel. Oh, you go to church at Selwyn. Pastor Brian's your pastor. I do now. Well, that's why you're doing so good right there. <laughs> Come on, give him one more big hand clap. Can you do that? Anybody else over here? Okay. You may be seated. You may, ladies and gentlemen, um, you go. You okay? All right. Then am I missing another testimony? I thought there was one more that needed to share. I just feel there was one more. Did we get that? Right here. This is the pastor from Africa, from Nigeria. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yesterday night, you know, when I came out to, because of my knee, yes. I, I told you uh, in 2019, I, I passed out in the plane. I was flying to Germany. Um, you were flying to Germany. Yes. And you what? You, I passed out. You passed out on yeah, the plane. Yes. Yeah, so a part of my right side was wow. a bit paralyzed. So that kind of affected my nerves on my leg. Wow. So I've um, been finding it difficult to pray kneeling down. But after yesterday night, I went back to my room. I purposely knelt on my right leg to pray for an hour. I spoke in tongue, and I felt <laughs> no, pain. no pain. Come on, what's the matter with this church? Look at this. And you pastor in Nigeria. What town yes. in Nigeria? 
in Lagos. Lagos. Yes, Lagos. Lagos. Yes, Lagos. Lagos. Okay, yes. that's the capital, right? Lagos. Yeah, the, uh, commercial city, former capital, but Abuja is now the capital. So where was Benson? He was in Benin. Benin, yes, Benin. Benin, yeah. Nigeria. Benin, yeah. mm. And your church, you pastor a church. Yes. And your wife is there. Yeah, no, my wife is here. Oh, she's here. Is she in the uh, meeting? Not, not in the meeting. No. Not in the meeting. Yes. Uh, okay. Well, we're glad you're here. And, and when you're going back, he uh, flew in just to be in these meetings. Yeah, because I, I wanted to see you. I just say I have to see you. Mm -hmm. I told you uh, it was in 20. 2021 July that you were in Papa Copeland's church uh -huh. when you prayed for that woman that had uh, hyperthyroidism. Oh, yeah. So I have the uh, I have to download the video from YouTube. <laughs> I played it every day, connecting to you. This lady, connecting to you. This, yeah. yeah, this lady, she had Hashimoto's. Yes. She had over 80 illnesses. Her hands were cupped. Her feet were cupped. She's in a wheelchair. She couldn't move, and she was on the other side of Dallas. And they had the radio on, and uh, they heard about the meeting we were having over at, the, over at the church. And she said to her husband, get me there as fast as you can. He said, why? And she said, I don't know why. When they arrived at the church, the place was packed, and they, the ushers told me they had to pry her out of the car because she was all twisted. And they put her in a wheelchair, and, they, and when they was wheeling her up, Kenneth Copeland was sitting right on the aisle. And Kenneth said to me later, he said, when that lady... Was walk, when they wheeled her by me, I thought, dear Lord, if that lady gets healed, wow, this place will go crazy. Well, when, that, when, she, when she got up to the front, I went over and I said, so what's happening? And the husband was there and, and the power hit her. I can't do that. If you're looking for me to help you, you come to the wrong place. Don't leave yet, though. I didn't take the offering. Come on, don't leave yet. <laughs> and when she got up out of that chair and she ran... The video, the video of this, I mean, the, the place shook. If you can imagine a few thousand people, the place shook. And you know where she ran? Up on the stage. And she went right to the keyboard. Because she used to be able to play, and she hasn't been able to play for so many years. And she just began to play in the band, with the band. And uh, what, what an amazing story that is. Joan Green, her name is Joan. Now, Joan, if you're watching, what a great miracle that was. And it touched this man all the way in Nigeria. And you got a heart to see God do miracles. Yes, sir. You do. Put your hands up. You're going to see them. You're going to see them. Make sure you give him all the credit, all the glory. Don't you take none for yourself. Don't you take none for yourself. And God's going to shake Nigeria again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He shook Idaho, he shook Nigeria, he shook Benin, but he's going to shake right where you are. He's going to shake, he's going to shake it. Come on, somebody give God a shout. And the thunder's going to move through Toronto again, again. Come on, somebody say again. Always honor your past. Nobody's ever trying to deny the great things that went on at the airport. Amazing. Touch the world. But there's another wave coming. There's another one coming. And each one that comes will outdo the last one until the day that he comes. Are you ready for this? Come on, say, I'm ready for the next wave. Come on. Come on, give God a big, big shout. Come on, all over the place. Come on, we give him all the praise, all the glory, all the honor. And what I ask you to do, what I ask you to do in these meetings, there's no charge, never will be. I mean, many people come, they come for a long time and never give anything. Well, how do you make it? There's people here. That give more than they probably can even afford. Somebody makes it available for you to be here to receive. When I was healed at Catherine Kuhlman, I was nine years old, and we had never given her any money at all. I was standing there nine years old, never have sown into her ministry. And so it came to me. I said, well, Lord, if, if we didn't give her any money and we just didn't have any money to give, number one, but number two, just didn't, wasn't taught that. 
So here I get healed of brain cancer, three days to live. And later on, I said, but how did, how did, he said, well, somebody had to give her money to be there for you. See, sometimes you're giving money to set the table for other people. It can be for you, but it may be for some people that are going to be coming in the future that don't have any money at all. But if you have some, why would you not share it with what you heard here tonight? I'm asking you to give. Put your hands up. I'm going to pray. Then you give. And I believe they, they where's the, there's the buckets up here. What, how are we doing that? What's that? The ushers are going to pass it. Okay, hold your hands up here. I'm going to pray. I pray, Holy Spirit, that everyone with the sound of my voice tonight would hear your voice. Overshadow my voice. Only you know that you can breathe on their bank account. You can breathe on a little bit and make it a lot. We can live by the sweat of our brow or we can live by the, the abundance of a harvest that only God can bring. But every seed that is sown creates expectancy. Come on, say, every seed that I sow creates an expectancy. Without a seed, you don't expect. But when you sow a seed, you actually believe something's going to come out of the ground. I'm sowing tonight for this Touching Toronto ministry. That God, you would expand it. That you would accelerate it. That you would supply all the workers that we need. And the bigger facility. Now look at me. We couldn't even, we had to cancel our, our healing school this year. We were going to launch a healing school right here in Toronto. I mean, you talk about getting you charged up and getting fired up. We couldn't find a place of the right size that was somewhat affordable. Because everybody's, you know, they're spiking their prices everywhere you go. In Tampa, what I paid three thousand for is now seven thousand. That's what's that's what's taking place. They're just taking advantage everywhere, including here. So we postponed because we don't, we're not here to put a burden on you. You know, and we're not here to trying to find one rich person that'll pay for everything. We want you all to give. Because we want you to see what it's like to be blessed. I believe this. I've watched it. I've watched it. Like David said, I was young, now I'm older, and I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. Come on, make that check payable. Who do they make it payable to, David? Yeah, make your checks payable to SOC. Uh, put your hand up if you do not have an envelope. The ushers will bring back an envelope. Put your hand up till they get there. Wave it at the ushers. As, the, as they're handing out the envelopes, make your checks payable to SOC. It's on the overhead here. If you're going to give by debit uh, card, you can go into the lobby. There'll be someone there to help you using debit card. If you're using credit card, you obviously know what to do there. Put in all the digits. Print nice and clean and clear. And everything, your email, telephone number, the whole bit. And uh, if you do that, you'll get a tax receipt at the end of the year. So make sure you fill in all your information clearly and correctly. Again, make checks payable to SLC for Selwyn Outreach Center. All right, anyone else need an envelope back there? Put your hand, just wave your hand if you need an envelope. Last call. I see back, yeah, go back there, Tony. Anyone else? Okay, keep your hand up till the ushers come. Last call. Anyone needs an envelope? Put your hand up high, just wave it. Last call. Okay, checks payable to SOC. Debit machine out in the lobby. Credit card, fill in all your information. Print really clear. All the digits, expiry date for your credit card. And that way we'll be able to put it into our system. You get a tax receipt at the end of the year. So I should just wait for my, my uh, let you guys know when you go to get that offering. Right, so don't rush. So just wait for a minute. Please remain seated during the offering. And, uh, and ushers, I'll let you know when to go pick it up right in a moment. Go ahead, Duncan. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. And all my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. And all my So, so good With every 
Okay, ushers, go ahead, pick up the envelopes. Please remain seated. And I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in the darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have There we go. Let's all stand to our feet just for a moment all over the place. Thank you for that offering tonight. Thank you for the offering tonight. Oh, we praise you and thank you for the offering tonight. Mm, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just put your hands up all over the place tonight. With what time we have left, let's believe tonight that, that God's going to touch you. going to deliver you. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. There's disc herniation being healed right now. Somebody with her herniated discs is being healed. Who is this? Disc herniation in the back, being wonderfully touched by the power. Quickly come to me. Disc herniation. Herniation with the disc. Don't wait. Don't wait. I want you to get over here. Up here, quickly. Come on, sir. Is that you? Disc herniation, quickly. I'm waiting, I'm waiting. 
Where, where? How long you had this, ma'am? Is it hurting now? Yeah, it's How hurting. bad is it hurting? Maybe 60%. Yesterday 60%. Yesterday get better. We'll check it Yesterday again right now. Check it again. Mm -hmm. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. What? And... <laughs> She's touching the floor, by the way. Something happened, and now. Come on, somebody give God a shout. He touched me and me whole. Herniated disc. And since I met my blessed. Savior. It's my grandmother's favorite verse. Since he cleansed and made me whole, I will never cease to praise him. I will never cease to praise him. Come on, I'll shout it. I'll shout it while eternity rolls. Come on, every single voice. He touched me. He touched me, and that mighty part, the whole mighty part. Something happened. Something happened. Be thou loose. And now I know he touched me. I need the oil. I to let's sing it again. I need everybody. Come on. I need thee every hour. Every hour I need. Help him by help Bless me now, my Savior. What? 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 She says it doesn't hurt anymore. It doesn't hurt anymore. What's the matter with this crowd? Come on. My God. Ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. Come here. So how long you had that? How long have I had? Yeah. I've had a hurt back for about 20 years. But the pain, I couldn't stand up from last Wednesday straight. Well, you're straight now. Yeah. And I had to walk in with a walker. You had to what? Walker. You walked in with a walker. Now you yeah. don't need it. Yeah. Thank you so much. Hey, oh, hey. from? I'm from Oshawa. Oshawa. You have a church there you go to? Yes. What's the Embassy. Name of that? Embassy Who? Church. Embassy. Who yeah. told you to come here? My friend Agnes. Where's Agnes at? Where's Agnes? Come on, Agnes. Come here, Agnes. Where's Agnes at? Hey, Agnes, look what you did. Look what you made happen. Don't get me crying. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Come on, because he lives, all fear, all fear is gone. Because I know, because I know, oh, oh, oh. he holds the future and 
life is worth, and life is worth the living just because he lives. And because he lives. Come on. Because he lives. I can face tomorrow. Because. Because he lives. All fear. All fear is gone. Because I know. Amazing. This fun to absorb it. You know, when you see this, absorb it. See, if you gave an offering tonight, if you did, this reward's coming to you. You sowed into this. A piece of that miracle is yours. That's the power of giving in a meeting like this. I tell people, where I go, you go. What I do, you do. The reward I get, you get. That's why this works. To catch on to this. Hallelujah. My God, this is amazing. Give me that girl in the blue dress right there. You, ma'am, the blonde in the blue dress. Yeah, hurry up. It's her birthday. Birthday girl. <laughs> <She's just> birthday. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> well, I guess we picked the right girl here tonight. So where are you from? I'm Toronto. Uh -huh. Toronto. So, so have you been here before? Yes. And yes. tell me about tonight. What are you here for tonight? Well, it's my birthday, so I was so happy to come here for my birthday. But my, my husband and I have had Lyme's disease. And Lyme's I have, disease. I have fibroids, and I have a bit of colitis. Can you feel <laughs> your fibroids? Yeah. Feel them. Yeah. What? Ooh. What? You don't feel them. No. <laughs> Somebody better give God the shout here tonight. Come on. What's the matter with this place? It's worth the look on her face. <laughs> Everybody ought to know, everybody ought to know who Jesus is. Everybody ought to know, everybody ought to know, everybody ought to know who Jesus is. He's the lily of the valley, sing it. He's the lily of the valley. He's the bright. Bright and morning star, He's the fairest of ten thousand. Everybody, everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Come on, let's do it. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. He's the healer of my body. He's the healer of my body. Savior of my soul. He's the Savior of my soul. He's the Holy Ghost baptizer. He's the Holy Ghost baptizer. Everybody. Everybody ought to know. Here we go. Everybody ought to know. Look at that for happy birthday to you. Oh, you can't you, feel Jesus. the fibroids. No. Thank you, God. Thank you. Who are you here with? Actually, my pastor and my prayer who's your, group who's that your we pastor? have in Toronto. You're the pastor? Come to me, yes. pastor. Yes. Yeah, and he's just had some strokes and. And, and he doesn't give up. He's at a big miracle. Ninety of us you prayed for him. You were here last night. I didn't know you were her yes, pastor. Yes, well, I, I lead the home church group. Okay. So we have a home church group. Every That's okay. Friday nights we get together. That's wonderful. Is your wife here? No, I'm not married. You're not married. You're a single pastor? I'm a 
All the sheep are going to want you. I don't you refer to myself as pastor, but I'm a whole church, I'm a whole church leader. I'm telling you, ladies, listen to me. You leave this guy alone. He's the pastor. You can't steal the pastor out of the group. Unless it's Holy Ghost, right? We thank you, dear Jesus. We thank you for the power. Oh, wow. Well, we thank you. Pastor, put your hands up. Oh, Pastor, he's going to bless you and, and increase this Bible study. He's sending people with money. He's sending people that want to help work. You're in the very infant stages. A humble beginning it is. But don't despise it, Pastor. He loves your heart. You care for the people you have. Make sure they have food. Make sure that they're being taken care of. Nurture the people. Don't love them and leave them. Just love the people. Feed my sheep. Feed my lambs. And I'll take care of you more ways than you can ever imagine. Hallelujah. By the Holy Thank Ghost. You, Come on, somebody give God a shout. Come on. Come on, give him a mighty praise. Oh. Oh, my word. Thank you, Lord, for that. Oh, we give him such praise. Mm. Amazing. So amazing. So amazing. That lady, where's she at? She had a testimony. Bring her to me. Come on, sister. She said she had a testimony, and I said, I'll bring you up. I want to hear what she has to say. She looks like a happy Nerve lady. damage is what she's... I'm sorry? Nerve damage? I mean, I nearly... I said, I pray to God you remember that I asked him to go. Um, let me make it short. I'm an old retired registered nurse. Okay. I'm a whole woman of God. I've been in God from I know when. <laughs> and just when I decided to do everything for the Lord, I came to Canada on a visit and I got on a heat stroke. Heat stroke. Heat stroke in 2017. 2017. And it damaged my nerve, right. wow. my vision. I'm not hearing out of my right wow. ear. But strangely, tonight, while we were talking, I started hearing a little thing in my ear. What's the matter with this place? Are you tired? Come on, are you tired? Give the master the praise tonight. Come on. And I said... He that begun a great work is able to finish it and I'm not leaving here tonight. I say I have to sit past because it I want to finish work because I want to go back to do God's work. Amen. I am a woman of God, I'm a missionary, and I, these things just see what am I doing with this? <laughs> and I serve a God. It is embarrassing to my faith. I don't need it. And sit, but I said, I'm gonna humble myself. You're going home without this. And wait until my change come in Christ. And this is why I come. And when, you, when I saw you call me, I come there and say, Lord, let him see me. Let him see me. Let him see me. <laughs> and when I saw you call me, I said, this is it. It's finished. It's finished. My yes. prayer is answered. Jesus loves me. He loves me. And yes, Jesus loves me. The, the Bible. Jesus loves me. Everybody, a cappella. Little ones to That's it. Come on. They. He is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Oh, yes, Jesus loves me. And yes, yes Jesus loves me. The tells me so. Wow. Your legs are what? Would you just say? In Him. I live. Oh, you're getting preaching on me and now. And move and reign and have my being. 
I don't want to finish. I mean, I'm so embarrassed what is happening to me. This the power's is not, coming on you. Get ready. This is not good. I said the power's getting ready to hit you, lady. Oh. By the power of Holy Ghost. By the Holy Ghost. That mighty power. That mighty power of the Holy Ghost. Leave go with this lady. Leave go with that chair. Walk, just walk. Just walk. Just walk. Somebody better praise him. Somebody better give God a shout. My God is a good God, yes, he is. My God is a good God, yes, he is. Yes, he is, yes, he is, yes, he is. My God is a good God, yes, he is. My God is a good God, oh, yes, he is. My God is a good God, yes, he is. Yes, he is, yes, he is, yes, he is. My God's a healing God. My God is a healing God, yes, he is. Come on, everybody. My God is a healing God, yes, he is. My God is a healing God, yes, he is. Yes, he is, yes, he is, yes, he is. My God can do anything, yes, he can. My God can do anything, oh, yes, he can. My God can do anything, yes, he can. Yes, he can, yes, he can, yes, he can. My God is a good God, yes. My God is a good God, yes. yes, He is. My God is a good God, yes, He is. Yes, He is, yes, He is, yes, He is. Yes, He is. Come on! Yes, He God is coming soon, yes he is, yes he is, yes he is, yes he is, my God is a rich God, yes Rich God, yeah, my God is a rich God, oh yes he is, my God is a rich God, yes he is, yes he is, yes he is, yes he is, my God is a good God. My God is a good God, oh yes he is. My God is a good God, yes he is. Yes he is, yes he is, yes he is. My God, my God is a good God. Yes, come on, let's do it, come on. My God is a good God, oh yes he is. My God is a good God, yes he is. Yes he is, yes he is, yes he is. Oh yes he is, yes he is. Can. Yes, he can. Yay! Yes, he can. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Come on, give him a mighty praise. You, you, you're just, there's too much evidence in this room tonight for you to leave here not knowing him as your Savior. Why would you say no in your heart? But I'm a Baptist. Be a saved Baptist. But I'm a Catholic. Be a saved Catholic. Religion don't save you. Religion is outside in. Christianity is inside out. Why would you not accept this Jesus tonight? Or why would you not be sure that you are? When's the last time you rededicated your life to Him? It'd be sad to go to hell after all this. Think about that. How many people will be in hell thinking I had all those moments to make it right and I never did? 
Hell was made for the devil and his angels, not for you. Yeah, but why would I do this and I can't do it? I can't keep it. No, none of us can. It's his grace that keeps you. And he will keep you. He will show you the way. He will give you a path. It'll be your path. It won't be the same path as everybody's here. It'll be your path. I don't want your path, and you certainly don't want my path. We all try our own path, but he carved that out. Who said that? Thank you, Jesus. Is that you back there thanking him? You what? You're bubbling. Where do you come from? Where do you come from? I'm a Jamaican. Oh. All right. Every time. What part of Jamaica? I am from St. Anne. That is in Ultras area. Okay. I live there. You live here in Toronto, though. But no, I'm from Canada. I'm a Canadian citizen. Okay. So I want to go home with the gospel. I want to go home. I am hungry for this. You want to go home where? I want to go back to Jamaica. Come back and, to Jamaica. And let them know what God is doing. And he will do it for them too. But wow. if I go home and, and they see I'm ill, a whole church going to come to know Jesus. That's why I must go home. There's a song that goes, hey, hey, man, do you know my Lord? Hey, hey, man, do you know my, my Lord? Lord? Hey, hey, man, man do you know my, my Lord? Lord? Do, do you, you know, know, do you know, do you know my Lord? That's a Jamaican song. Chummy, chum on, chum on. I read every time it's Jesus. <laughs> Woo! I thought that was pretty good. Thank you very much. I thought that was pretty good. She's so glad she's a part of the family. Hands up all over the place. And I'm going to have you come up. I'm going to do an impartation tonight up here at the altar. I want everyone. I don't want no one slipping out the side door. I want you all up here at this altar. I'm going to stand on the stage. I'm going to impart to you. I believe it works. I believe it worked from Moses to Joshua. Joshua to his generation. It worked from Jesus to his disciples. Just join me right up here if you would, please. If you would. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh. Look at this crowd. Look at this. Look at this. Yeah, yeah. I'll take that. Come on. You got to behave if you come up here, though. You got to behave. You got to behave. How many of you have a home church? Let me see. You have a home church. How many love your church? Beautiful. What's that? Oh, I'm her church right here. I have a membership of one right here. I have a good friend that's here tonight. I haven't seen him for some time. And Come on up here. This is Gary O'Brien. Come on up here, Gary. Let Gary up here. Gary and I became such great friends. His wife, Yanni, I don't see her here tonight. Come on up here. Come on. What year did we meet, Gary? What year was that? 99. 90. 90, yeah. 1990. Yeah. This guy and his wife were, they were the best friends that we traveled. How where did we travel? Everywhere. Wiscaganish. <laughs> <laughs> we hit, yeah, we crossed the tundra to the Cree Indians. We went up north, 60 below, I think yeah. it was. Yeah. We saw the northern lights and had over a 1,000 Cree Indians yeah. every night in the meetings. But him and his wife, give him a big God bless you. Could you do that for um, you can't, You can't do too much without people helping you. Even Jesus couldn't carry his own cross. Say that Jesus couldn't even carry his own cross. He needed help. And there was a black man in the crowd, one Simon of Cyrene, who came out and said, hey, I'll 
I'll bear the reproach, whatever. And for some reason, he was permitted, amazes me, to carry, help him carry that cross the whole way to Golgotha. Don't give up. God has people in your life. If they're not there, they'll be coming to help you emotionally, mentally. And that's what Gary and his wife did. They were with me. I mean, I didn't have any money. I was broke. I didn't have much. He owned a couple restaurants up in Unionville. Very prosperous man, him and his wife. And they came in and laid money on the table. And you did so much. You did so much. It was a privilege. And I loved you. I, and I still love you. I love you, brother. I still. <laughs> reach your hands out to this guy. You know, reach your hands out. What he's been through is a whole nother story. None of us leave here without getting marked up a little bit. Quit feeling sorry for yourself. Stop it. You're not the only one. There's a room full of people here that have been beaten up pretty bad. If we went around this room, some of the stories here tonight are horrific, shameful, embarrassing. And that's why we all need a Savior and a healer. And don't, let think, don't think life will heal you or the next marriage will heal you. You're living a lie. There's one healer that we all know. His name is Jesus. Let's reach our hands out to Gary. I wish Yenny was here tonight, but... Lord, we thank you, and I thank you personally, publicly, for Gary and his wife, Yenny. I can't even put in the words or the dollar amount that they've meant to Billy Burke and to my family and to this, this work in Toronto and Canada. As he said, we covered, uh, we covered a lot of territory. We did. Lord, I can never repay him, but you can bless him. He's lost so much in this life serving you. Bless him tonight. Send a wave of your restoration to their home, to their business. I pray, God, that he has enough money in the very near future to retire, to do everything he ever wanted to do beyond his wildest imaginations. Bless him. You said you would give us the hidden treasures. Somebody say hidden treasures. That you would give the O'Briens the hidden treasures. Keep them strong. Keep them healthy. Keep them here serving you. And may we do a labor together again in this great harvest. In Jesus' name. Everybody said. <laughs> Come on, give me a hug, guys. Love you. Love you, sir. Love you, love you. Come on, give God a big, big shout. Come on. Come on. Come on, let's shout a big one. Does anybody, does anybody feel different? You got a healing. Stand, um, who, uh, there's other people that have been healed. Yes, sir. Somebody else has been healed, he, healed. In this crowd, sitting out here tonight, your back, your legs, your eyesight's better. Where? What's going on? Where? Your elbow. Because your elbow got healed. Who else? Somebody else. Quickly. Spirit's your spirit's healed. We did a lot of that tonight. Yeah. Who else? Way in the back. Your eyesight. She can read that. She couldn't read that before. Anybody over in this section? Yes. What happened, ma'am? Your eyesight. Your hearing. Four spinal surgeries and and now there's no pain. Oh my gosh. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh my, bring the coat. Let them through the crowd. Let them through the crowd. Okay, just we believe in all this. My grandmother believed in this. Well, your grandmother was right. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm just going to hold it for a minute, okay? Let me just hold it. Who else got touched? Who else? I'm waiting to hear for some more. Yes, sir. Your what? Jerry. What happened to your knee? Jerry. Just a minute, Shh, sir. 
Your knee, I'm sorry, sir. You tore your meniscus. And now? A lot better than when you came in. Awesome. Just raise your hand. Raise your hand. Yes, ma'am. Your what? Your elbow. What's that on your neck? That's just a dress, right? I thought it was a, I thought it was a cast. <laughs> okay. Who else back here? Yes, ma'am. Your what? Your eyesight is much better. Wonderful. Yes, ma'am. Way in the back. Yes. 34 years of misery. You can forget your past. Wow. Wow. I'm waiting for a few more. Just a few more. No, a few more. Where, where, where? Right here. Angular tocoma. Oh, my. That's like drainage out of your eyes and out of your nasal. Wow. Wow. Jesus. Keep that. Swarm of. Yeah. He got healed tonight. You got healed tonight. Beautiful. Over here. Yes, sir. You got healed of memory problems? Wow. Wow. Is your wife with you? Is your wife with you? Did you hear what he said? What's that mean to you? What's that mean to you? Yes. Um, back when you were with Gary and Andy. Yes. I went to a lot of your meetings and then I lost track of you. Yeah. But you prayed over me. And you, you prayed over me. And you said that I will have the life of Stephen and that I had the heart of David. Wow. Now, one of the miracles that Jesus worked through me was in Fort Myers. It, near where your home uh, church is. I was told by my pastor that I would meet somebody on the sidewalk that needed prayer. And it turned out to be the owner of a restaurant um, on Old St. Carlos Road, uh, Island Brew, that his wife had potassium, or his, his mother-in-law had high potassium. And... They were all Christian, spirit-filled, and we got together and prayed because the wife or the, the mother-in-law was going to go into surgery. So we all prayed in this little coffee bar, and the next day I was, I was heading home to Canada here, and uh, he came over to me and he put his hands on me after he brought us our, our breakfast and said, she is now healed. She does not have the, to have the surgery. Wow. And, and I was told this in Canada. Beautiful. Meanwhile, we stopped at the White House on the way, on the way home. A lady fell, and she was elderly, and she couldn't get up. And I'm out away from the, the fence, the gate, and the Lord kept saying, go pray for her. And I'm going, no, I don't want to get involved. He said, go pray for her. And I said, no, no, no. Finally, I gave in. I went over and prayed for her. They got her up, and she walked away. Beautiful. So I just want to know. His name is Jesus. 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 There's just something about that name. Good job. He's my master. Come on. He's my master. Savior. Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain. You have a handkerchief? You want a handkerchief? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Let all heaven, let all heaven and earth, and earth proclaim. Come on, kings and kings. They'll all, all pass away, but, but there's 
something about that day. Now put your hands up. I'm going to put a blessing and an impartation. I'm going to give you back this jacket. Who has that? I've been holding that. There's virtue in that jacket. Virtue. Don't wear it. Don't do nothing with it. Get it to him. Okay? Put your hands up all over the place. And Master, I thank you for this audience tonight. And I release a generational blessing over every person here. I pray the trickle down of healing, economics, favor and blessing and anointing would go into everyone's children and their grandchildren. I pray that the curses and the monsters they've had to face will not be faced by these other generations. I pray for a blessing that moved into this audience, a burning, yearning, and churning desire. Everybody say burning, yearning, and churning desire to reach out and help people, to say a prayer, to give a hand, to cut a check, to give food, to give a ride, to cast a shadow that this generation of people will be able, empowered, and willing to release the Holy Ghost. Such as they have, they will give it. And the more they give it, the more you'll give it back. I pray that no weapon formed against this crowd will prosper. And I pray for an abundance of rain, the latter rain, the former rain, together would fall on this crowd. And I pray for the anointing to break every yoke, every fetter, and every chain, every disease that's here or on the way to their house. It'll never make it there. I pray for an abundance of money. I pray for a hundredfold return on every single individual for the work of God, for the end time harvest, that they would know that the heavens have opened, the blessing has fallen, and they are now empowered. They are forgiven. They are washed. They are cleansed. And a burden has been placed in them to do the greater works. In Jesus' name. Now let's give God a thunder of praise. Come on. Come on. Here's a CD here. One source, many resources. What a great teaching right here. I don't want to throw that. You'll hit somebody. Here's our show with Sid Roth. Years ago, we was on the Sid Roth. It's supernatural. I'm going to give that to that man from Nigeria. Breaking soul ties. Everybody needs this. Everybody needs the blonde back there with her sunglasses on her head. Yeah, that's you. I don't want to hit anybody, but I'm going to try, okay? Get that to her. I don't want to hurt anybody. Uh, this was how God really sees you. It's written in red in his blood. Who wants that? That's that big guy right out there. And this one here is a girl that came with no stomach. Angie Cheek, the story of Angie Cheek. She came in one night with no stomach. Uh, it was removed accidentally by a surgeon. She was bleeding and hemorrhaging. They hooked up her esophagus to her intestines. And she was living temporarily on iced tea and pickles. They brought her into a meeting, and God created a stomach in this woman. Who wants this? Come on, who wants this? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Everybody ought to know. Come on, I know that. Come on. Everybody ought to know. What? Who Jesus is. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know who Jesus is. Come on, tell him. He's what? He is the lily of the valley. He is the bright and morning star. And he is the fairest of ten thousand. Hey. 
everybody, everybody ought, ought to know. Come on! Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know who Jesus is. Come on, he's the healer. Oh, hey. He's the healer of my body. He's Savior. He's the Savior of my soul. Holy Ghost. He's the Holy Ghost baptizer. Everybody. Everybody. Everybody ought to know, everybody ought to know, everybody ought to know who Jesus is. Everybody ought to know, everybody ought to know, everybody ought to know who Jesus is. Come on, give him a big shout tonight. Believe, believe very carefully what you're listening to and what's changing your moods and your emotions. Don't trust the media. Don't make the media your God or your final authority. Check everything with the written word. There's more of that same poison on the way. And they're going to try and do it again. Well, you, you, you got to not give in to fear. Come on, say, the first time, I didn't see it coming. I kind of gave in a little. This time, I see it, and the devil's a liar. Come on, give God a shout. Come on. Come on. What a powerful night this is. What if you doing okay, ma'am? You all right? Special time these Toronto meetings. Yes, ma'am. What's that? The name of the restaurant. Right here, Gary O'Brien. Where's Gary? What's the name of the restaurant? Uh, Living Water Restaurant and Cake Gallery on Main Street, Unionville. Yeah. Living Water Restaurant. Living, we wanted it to be a um, restaurant run by Christians rather than a Christian restaurant because we thought that by uh, putting the Lord's name on it, we'd be, have a natural tendency to allow people to say, where are we going? We're going to Living Water. So we wanted them to confess it. And from time to time, any time we had a chance, that we could profess it. So... Uh, it was just a blessing of the Lord all those years. And uh, I bumped into Billy by accident. Here it is 33 years later. <laughs> and I'm never sorry for any of it. Thank you, Lord. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Wow. Put your hand on somebody's shoulder. We're going to close tonight a little differently. Just a little differently tonight. Come on, say these words. I don't know what this person's going through, but I love them. And I release my faith tonight that you would visit them and heal them of all their hurt, all their pain, any bondages, that you would send other people their way to be a resource to them, whatever that may be. But I release the love of God and the blessing of Abraham. I release that anointing, that unlimited portion of the anointing. And I ask you to let favor fall in a way that it never has before. Nothing missing and nothing broken. That God is with them. And his mighty presence will go before them. Help them change this city and wherever else they may live or wherever they may travel, let revival follow them in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, give him a mighty shout. Come on. Good night. God bless you. And he walks with me. And he walks with me and he talks with me. 
And he tells me I am his own And the joy we share as we tarry there None other has ever known Ushers, ushers, catchers